skeleton uh, aggro's on you, Richard, and uh, charges you. Uh, it rolled a 19, so it hits AC 23, which I'm guessing is a hit. Yes, it is. Reroll your character. <laughs> and he rolled max damage. So you take <laughs> eight points of damage uh, as this um, skeletal creature uh, slashes at you. Please don't die from a skeleton. Okay. I... That was nice. It's got like a, like a thick bone, basically, that it smacked you with, so you take eight points of bludgeoning damage. Nice. He's boning you. I'm so good. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, brings up the uh, large, hairy creatures, uh, who both once again slam their morning stars into the table. Yeah, and so with that, basically there's two uh, more large thuds, and the table is just, you know, this the central part that was actually acting as a door is just completely obliterated, and now just one large gaping hole. There's like wood splinters and little pieces of wood uh, on the floor. Uh, Oscar, you can get your attack that you prepared now. Okay. Uh, that's a hit. I'm not raging at the moment, so that's why the damage is meh. Uh, these guys around you, Beric, uh, attack you once again. Uh-huh. The, um... Bloodsworn misses you, but the other guy hits you again with his morning star. You take seven points of piercing damage as he slams it into your body. Um, that's their turn. So, yep, Beric. Let's see if this works now. No. All right. Like, uh, that hits. Which one are you biting, by the way? Uh, the one in front of me, the the hairy one. It's been attacking him all the time. Yep. So you do five points of damage. You slash into his furry, hairy body. And claws don't do shit. Yeah, that misses. He catches it on his shield. Uh, Richard? So he either gets an attack of opportunity on me. If I or I can try and disengage, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I will disengage. What do I have to do? Do I have to acrobatics or, <laughs> or something? No, it just, yeah. just takes your action. Yeah, that's it. 
Okay. Now you only have a move action and a free action and a bonus action. Okay, well, I'm going to move away. All right, hold on one second. Oh, God, is this hallway full of traps as well? Are you trying to kill me, Aaron? <laughs> oh, dear. This is... So this make a... a um... Make a wisdom check. Spawn killing isn't nice, Aaron. Yeah, so you notice as you're running um, that the floor there is all fucked up. Um, and so you have to run around like the edges. Um, make a DC, well, uh, make a dexterity uh, save. Uh, that fails. So? So basically, as you're running around the edges, a uh, like a pit opens up underneath you, and you fall into it. Hmm. <laughs> wow. Shit. Um... Pull so roll a d4. Out. Roll a d4? Yeah, to see how many spikes you land on. Okay, so roll 1d6 and 2d4 to see how much damage you take. You take 5 points of bludgeoning damage from the 10-foot fall. And then seven points of piercing damage as two spikes pierce into your back. I'm now on 11 health. What? Already? Shit. This is bad. So, I'm, I'm clearly leaving you guys, by the way, if I do manage to get out of this fucking pit. <laughs> do you have healing word? Yeah. As a bonus action, you can cast it. Brilliant, that's what I do the second I hit those spikes at the bottom. Your healing word is FUCK! <laughs> <laughs> can I, can I, I'm gonna cast that at level 2. You can, I think, as long as it say if something happened if you cast it at higher level. I think I got six healing. So you yep. heal six points, uh, isn't it? Oh Plus no, uh, ten points. Yeah, ten. Yeah, total. so ten points. Brilliant, thank you. Feeling good. So that pretty there. much undoes the damage from the trap. So not cover the skeleton damage, though. Sadly. Yeah, I'm done. Uh, yeah, that brings up Cecilia. Okay. Cecilia is fuming that she missed her carefully aimed invisible spear, and now that she can, uh, now that they've broken down the middle of the table and she can see a clear shot of the guy, she makes another educated stab. Come on, Cecilia, do better. Uh, that misses. But then... <laughs> yeah. That also misses. Yeah, so you, like, uh, quickly strike at them through the, uh, through the table, but the hole is small enough that they can both basically, like, put their shields up to it, and both of your blows just bounce off their shields. Uh, Oscar? Cecilia, you have to do it like this. And then I yell. Uh, that hits. Uh, you slam your flail into 
loses his footing uh, as a solid blow catches him. See? Try it next time. <laughs> Brings up the skeleton. Come on, skeleton. Drop with him, too. Yeah, so the skeleton comes running forward and, like, sees you in the trap and just stands there watching you. Uh, This first guy uh, comes into the room and moves around here. Which actually gives you an attack of opportunity, Cecilia. Uh, is, that, is that with advantage? Or, uh, or yeah, that, that guy with advantage because I no yep. wait no, he started his. Oh turn, no, so yeah, that's yeah. right, his turn. So yeah, no advantage. Sorry. Okay. Uh, nice. But that hits. Oscar inspired Cecilia. Yeah, and you jab your spear into him, um, catching him pretty solidly. And, you know, as you retract your spear, uh, blood pours out of his wound, and you can see him sort of grimace uh, and limp now as he's as he walks around to the other side of Oscar and attacks. It's AC 15. No. Miss. I have a shield. I just cover that with the, my shoe. So yeah, there's a loud, like, resounding thud as his morning star comes down on your shield, and your arm it actually, like, hurts these guys hit pretty fucking hard. Uh, this other guy steps into the room and will attack either Oscar or Cecilia at random. Goes for Oscar. Uh, AC 13, I'm guessing. Yeah, it? no. Yeah, so again, you manage to bring your uh, your shield up. Actually, no, he has advantage. Hold on. Uh, no, didn't do him any good. So yeah, you do manage at the last second to move your shield over after the first guy attacks and catch the, uh, the second blow on it as well. Uh, brings us down to Barrack. Mm-hmm. Uh, so first the Bloodsworn. Well, actually, no, the, the other guy goes first. Oh, he rolls a one. Uh, but doesn't doesn't drop his weapon. Uh, just just horribly misses you. And then the uh, the guy with the two swords uh, tries to slash you. Rolls a natural 20 again. God damn it, man. <laughs> uh, I think I should just stop playing pen and papers. <laughs> what the fuck? I so he didn't, he didn't roll crazy damage this time. Uh, you take 14 points of damage as once again the student just lines up a, uh, a slash catching you like right in the neck. Um, definitely hitting like vulnerable uh, parts of your bare body there. Yeah, bare body. Fourteen, you said. Yep. Also, uh, these two Great. guys that were rummaging through uh, the wizard's body um, seem to have found what they were looking for, and one of them drinks a uh, potion. Uh huh. Um, they each like pocket a bag, um, a piece. Plus, one of them stuffs a scroll into one of his pockets. Uh, it's now your turn, Beric. Great. Come on, man! Uh, Kill at least one of them. Ah. Uh, bite. That hits. <laughs> Yay. I don't know what to say. How Damn many ones? Claws? Oh, nice. That hit. Oh. Uh, 11. Not bad. 16 then. 
Yeah, that guy's now like um, you know, bleeding fairly profusely. He's got, you know, um multiple wounds on his body. You can tell he's he's getting fairly close to going down. Hope so. Uh, brings up Richard. Okay, what can I do as my uh as, as getting out of this hole? Can I can I just acrobatics my way out? Yeah, you could try to acrobatics your way up. You could try to athletics your way up. Yeah, I'm going to go for acrobatics. Yeah, so you basically, like, uh, balance carefully on one of the spikes that isn't, like, super sharp. It's, like, a little bit dull. And you very carefully sort of, like, jump off one side and sort of propel yourself to the other side, catch the ledge, and then find yourself at the top. Okay. Uh, I will then move 30 feet away. Uh, I would like to use another healing word on myself. As long as you have spell slot. Tap space uh, to cast level one. Yep. Perfect. I'm like one away from full. You've got 20 more feet of movement if you want to oh, use well. both of your moves. Well, now comes the choice. Do I run away because... Uh... This this kind of I don't I, have I have I heard the raucous na- noise of battle or have I uh, you know yeah in fact it actually shifted at first it sounded like it was coming from the other side of the armory so like as you went into the armory area uh-huh. like behind you um, through the wall now as you get over to here actually you can hear it more loudly coming from this way hmm. well. Being a bard, I know that you know things. Things come as uh, as uh, you know challenges come in in, for, in many forms, and and generally I would not want to sing about my own deeds, but about someone else's deeds. So I you know. Mm, well, I I imagine. Okay, I open this door in, in front of me. At least I can see through and. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll walk forwards a tiny bit and then see if I can see anything in this room. And I well, instantly see a big pile of bodies. <laughs> yeah, so as soon as you enter that room, you see three dead bodies, plus where the dead body to the south is, um, is there's actually like this weird like stone, you know, door. I guess it's like a hidden, you know, passageway mm-hmm. that's like halfway open and you can see there's like a tunnel there and it is through that tunnel from where you can hear the screams of of battle, you know. Yes. Well, growing up with stories of of great battles, I know that there must be great heroes uh aiding uh, starting this battle and trying to defeat my captors, so I believe I will try and aid those heroes because it's my lifelong dream to join a merry band and sing of their deeds I can go 25 I think alright yeah you make your way uh, towards the sounds of battle which brings up Cecilia Come on, young lady, you can do it. Kill that motherfucker. Cecilia wants to go after the one who is more wounded, so Uh. she's going to circle around behind Oscar. And... um... Yes, you do so. The uh, massive creature uh, in front of you just sort of, like, swipes at you, uh, hitting AC 11. Yeah, that's a miss. As a reaction of him attacking Cecilia, I use my reaction to hit him. Okay, go for it. That's a hit. You shouldn't have done that. (laughs) Of course not. They will die right here.
So yeah, you definitely uh, avoid um, the attack, Cecilia. You sort of like duck it. You see Oscar slam his flail into the one who attacked you, seeing an opportunity, and you move around. Yeah, and I look at the... I look at the, the wounded one and try to hit him right where it hurts most. Yeah, so you you, you stab him uh, low center mass. And then a kick to the nuts. No. They're very yeah, that... it's a hard target. <laughs> yeah, that, that misses as he manages to, to block your strike. Uh, any key points or anything? Yeah, I've got one actually, and that's enough for a flurry of blows. So. Yeah, no. To make two an arm attack. I don't know if that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, sad, no. That's yeah, that misses. Ah. Uh, brings up Oscar. Maybe I can do you better. And then I also try to hit him in the nuts with my flail. <laughs> yeah, with the advantage that Cecilia gives you, uh, that that catches him, you know, perfectly squarely between the legs, and he just <laughs> falls over backwards, making strange noises. Stay down, motherfucker. Uh, do you do anything else? Um, I will move here. Okay. That's it. Uh, skeleton will try to pursue. I hope he dropped there and just die. Just yeah, he probably will. Well, I gotta roll his deck save. Yay! Thank God. <laughs> so yeah, you hear uh, the sound of bone um, like cracking into like stone surface. Uh, Richard, and you can presume that the skeleton fell into the pit trap. I presume that. And all the king's horses and all the king's men could not make Barry Cole again after this next attack. Yeah, so this guy attacks you, Oscar. AC 16. Nope. So yeah, his blow just sort of like comes down on your on your armor um, and doesn't manage to, to get through. Uh, then these two guys try to tag team you, Beric. Mm-hmm. Hot. So many natural 20s. What the hell, Aaron? <laughs> when Aaron GMs. That's, it's only on me as well. Like, a fucking... Uh... Um, yeah, this one's gonna hurt. Uh-huh. So take 18 points of piercing damage. Mm-hmm. I'm now a man. Now you're a man! I am a man. And I'm to 10 HP. In man form. And this guy slinks up and attacks you. Oh, and he rolls a natural one. Thank God. And he drops his weapon. Oh. Well, one of them at least.
Aaron's filling up his juice box. Sorry, my wife just came home. She was talking to me. Uh, so yeah, dude drops uh, one of his swords. The other sword misses. Um, these two guys are gonna make their way up this way. They think that Barrack looks pretty well handled. Uh, Barrack. Yeah. Um. I'm just reading a spell. Uh. Moonbeam. Uh. Would I be susceptible to that as well? Uh, let's see. A silvery beam of pale light shines down in a five-foot radius, 40-foot high cylinder centered on a point within range. Until the spell ends, dim light fills the cylinder. When a creature enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, it is engulfed in ghostly flames, cause searing pain, and it must make a con save. It takes 2d10 radiant uh, damage on a failed save, half as much on a successful Well, it's a five-foot radius beam. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think you would count as a creature if you centered that on yourself. All right. Uh, I'm going to center it on the guy in front of me, then. Can I do that? And that won't hit me, right? Because like, if I place it here, whatever. So you could place it, yeah, exactly there, and it would hit those two guys? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that. All right, so they need to make con saving throws. Chris, you should roll 2d10 either way. If they pass, they may they take half damage. Yeah, so one of the guys, the guy in the back succeeds, the guy in the front fails. Nine damage. So I think that'll actually happen on his turn, but yeah, basically hmm. you can see like ghostly flames uh, surrounding him. Let me just double check that. Uh, for the first time on a turn, uh, when a creature entered the spell's area for the first time on yeah. a turn. Yeah, or starts its turn there. So, yeah, so as soon as his turn comes around, he'll light up in flames. And the guy in the Are you going to move? Well. Uh, this guy doesn't have a weapon, right? On him right, right now. He does. He had two weapons, and he dropped right. one of them. Uh, I can move with concentration spells, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, totally. It's just that I can't do anything. Like... It it means that you can have two concentration spells at once. That's it. Mm. If you take damage, you have to make a concentration check or it drops. Yep. Well, save, I think. It's a con save, yeah. All right. Gonna run there. Uh, yeah. So you you get there and nobody manages to hit you as you run, although nice. they take swings. Is that your turn? Uh, yeah. I don't think I can do anything else. Uh, Richard. I continue my epic quest to find uh, the, the source of this fighting. Perfect. 
Are they? 230, yeah, 230s, right? 320, so that's 60 total of the movement. So, yeah. Yeah, you, you can definitely hear, like, you know, there's a battle just around the corner. Uh, you can hear, like, somebody with a very deep pitched voice just starting to scream. Um, and the smell of, like, burning hair is wafting through the air. Uh, you hear another person, like, breathing heavily. Um, and like grunting as they like um, are running in your direction, you can hear like loud footsteps coming your way. Hmm. Cecilia. Okay, Cecilia is going to stab this guy who is the meat in our sandwich. Stab him in the back. Yeah, you skewer him. And then I give him a good square kick. Yeah, and you you land a solid blow. Uh, Oscar? Good job, Cecilia. Make him suffer. Ah, oh, god damn it. Yeah, that misses. That was good damage, though. Sad. I'm just going to take the skeleton off. It's not getting out of the pit. <laughs> Doing that romba thing where it walks into the wall, tries to turn a little bit, walks into the wall, tries to turn a little bit, walks into the wall. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this guy turns around and attacks you, Cecilia. AC 15. That does hit. Take 9 points of damage as he slams a morning star into you. So and so, at... What? Go first. I can do my actions later. Yeah, I'm at 2 health then. You might want to roll the critical thing. And yeah, and as a reaction, I hit him with my flail. Yes, yeah, so you catch that in the torso. Uh, roll a d20 plus 2, Cecilia. I think that's no effect. Nice. Yeah, you're fine. Well, you say fine, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, no, no permanent effects from the blow. Uh, so you do 10 points of damage as he attacks Cecilia. That brings up these guys. Uh, so yeah, this guy bursts into flames um, and dies. Uh, this guy will spend his action picking up his uh, weapons. That second guy got half damage though, right? Because he started his turn in it. Yes. Okay. This guy moves up to here, but he can't attack you. Uh, and then these two guys. So you see two more blood storms start to come down the uh, the hallway across from you, Oscar. Uh, brings up your turn, Beric. Yeah. Uh, you can use an action to move the beam. 60 yeah, no. feet. Is it an action or a bonus action? An action. It's an action. Uh, and disengage is an ac- action. Yes. All right, I'm not disengaging them. Uh, do I have to do it in start of my turn, or can I move and then move? A part, a part of your turn, yes, you can move and at, do that. At any point in your turn, you can use your action right, to do I'm that. I'm going to move uh, over there to the other side of the bridge. Uh, 
Does he attack me? Yep, and he hits, and you take four points of slashing damage. I, I have 17, by the way, now. Not, not 11 anymore. How much did I take? Okay. Four. Uh, four points, yeah, he hit AC 22. Oh, nice. shit. Alright. <laughs> okay. Uh, four, so I'm down to six HP. Yeah, he basically like catches you in the leg as you as you run by him. Just you know, opens up a superficial wound. So what do I have to do to roll to keep the spell up? Concentration save. Just yep. click the con save. All right. Do you have Warcaster? What? No. Do you have doesn't. the War? Okay, yeah, never mind. Yeah, you, your spell stays up. Yeah, and I move it to. Uh... Uh, there, I guess. Uh, so that, like, it covers, like, this Fight area. Me. Does it actively cover the entrance onto the bridge, or can people sidestep onto it past it? It's the whole cylinder like this, so I presume it also covers, like, the entrance. It's going to cover the entrance, right? Because that's what I want to do, basically. Yeah, basically that. Just hear it loud, like, uh, you know, shouts about the moon. Starlight! <laughs> also, Chris, if you're under 10, uh, you should roll for the crit table. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, is that two D20s? Oh, was it? No, I can't remember. D20 and then another D20 plus your HP at the moment. That's torso. Roll a d20 plus 6. Yeah, you're fine. Cool. Um, yep, so this one guy is going to definitely start inside it. I'll just wait until his turn to do that, though. Oh. Okay, uh, Richard. Then I come barreling around this corner. I can get all the way to here. I know it's dirty. Are you wearing red right now? Uh, I'm wearing leather armor. Uh, yeah. well, you look pretty red on your pro- on your picture. While while that picture looks pretty red, it's just it's just normal leather jerkin. All right. And it's striped, so, so it's not the same. So Richard, you see one of the bugbears that captured you, um, and a blood sworn soldier that they turned you over to, um, who've been sort of like guarding and watching you and basically acting as jailers, are chasing a man who looks like he's a moment away from death, bleeding all over the place, um, you know, wounds all over his body. And the the man that they're chasing like runs across this bridge and then like very like says a word in a language you don't like you can't quite place, but you can tell is of our arcane nature. Um, but 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 not of the the sort of magic that you use. It's like a different mm-hmm. school of magic. And all of a sudden, this intense, like shining white, bluish white, silvery light, sort of like forms at the other side of the uh, of the bridge. And you can see uh, flames starting to erupt around the bloodsworn who's who's nearest the bridge. Nice. Well, uh, as as I know, the bugbear and the uh, bloodsworn are the, my jailers, and I obviously hate them. Uh, as I come running around that corner and literally bumping into Barak, I uh, uh, instinctively touch him, giving him my healing word level one. Uh, and let's see what happens. So after you bump into him, you sort of reach around and put your hands on him. Yeah. <laughs> You're giving me a reach around. Uh. Feeling you up a little. Uh-huh. And it feels good. So I gained 7 HP? Yeah. Cool. And, this. and you're like, touch me some more. You still have an action, so if you don't have anything, you can always throw your dagger. Uh, I have a light crossbow, so I will 
Shoot at whoever looks most like they're probably going to die, other than Barak. <laughs> let's, let's say the Heal Blood me. Swarm probably looks the most. This so, one have a shield, this one doesn't. Well, so then. the Blood Swarm doesn't look like he's taken any damage yet, but you can see there's like these strange, almost transparent flames starting to form mm-hmm. around his body. And the other guy doesn't look seriously wounded, but some of his hair, some of his like hairy body looks like, like it's been singed. Mm. Well, then I think I'm going to fire at the, uh, the Blood Swarm man. That misses. <laughs> Damn these electric sex pants! Uh, as, 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 I, as I as I miss. All right, things <laughs> up, Cecilia. Okay, Cecilia echoes. Damn you, electric sex pants! <laughs> and then <laughs> thrusts her spear into the ugly ass dude in front of her. Do you get advantage just because I attack him before? Um, yeah, although it's still on his turn at the mo- at the moment. Yeah, that get advantage. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh, you didn't need it though. The fourteen hits. Yeah, still. Just for the next attack. Yeah, because I am about to kick him in the electric sex pants. Come on, do it. Uh, unfortunately, his electric sex pants are just slightly too thick for your your blow to get through. Fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just... Well, I can still move. You um, can still move. I kind of want to... At least glance over at the table or remember from when I grabbed the vial if there were any other bottles that looked helpful over there. Yeah, he's got all kinds of stuff on his, you know, in his area. Yeah, work Lots area. Concoctions. I'm just really tempted yeah, to. S- strange arcane, you know, supplies. Mm hmm. I think she's more thinking of the lines of she's drank a, a healing potion in the past. So, is there anything that looks like one of those healing potions? Uh, you don't see anything that looks like a healing potion per se. Okay. Per- maybe the sorts of components that you would combine to make a healing potion. You actually saw, it was kind of creepy as you were going to grab the thing, you saw a bag of spiders. Like, it's weird, weird stuff. Were there any completed potions, though? Or is it just ingredients, mainly? Yeah, over there is just, yeah, different, you know, constituent parts to make what you presume is to, you know, make different arcane, you know, spells and infuse their magic into scrolls or potions or whatever he does. Yeah. Okay. Scrolls, you say? Yeah, the the scroll stuff was on the table that Oscar like dumped over, so they're mostly just across like the floor. Brilliant. Um, if there's any within reach of where she is, she just kind of like looks around for any, you know, awesome looking scrolls. Uh, if there's any like you know just scattered around her vicinity. Uh, make a perception check. Oh, not with advantage, but still. Yeah, so you see, like, lots of papers um, around you. None that you could identify as, like, an, an actual, like, working scroll. I mean, you could just test your luck and pick one up and try to use it. Yeah, I'll just... Don't you need Arcana or something to use it anyway? Or just, can Can anyone use it? I mean, I've never played... 5th edition or anything, so I don't know if scrolls are for everyone to use, but I kind of assume that they are something that's like, here's a like one-off spell that anyone can use without knowing spells or anything, but, you know, correct me if I'm uh, wrong. Let's see what the Dungeon Master Guide says about it.
Any creature that can understand a written language can read the arcane script on the scroll and attempt to activate it. So yeah, you could try your luck. Okay, she just picks up a random piece of paper at her feet and reads what's written on it. All right. Um, however, on page 200 in the spell scroll entry, it states that if the spell is on your card list, uh, you can use it, use an action to read it. Otherwise, the, the scroll is illegible. Page 200. I'm looking... Yeah. I'm googling if anyone can use magic scroll, and that is the first answer. Huh. That's weird. Then the other section it just says, yeah, if and it's then in a language you understand, you can use it. And then after that, you also have to have a uh, roll DC ten plus scroll level uh, arcana roll to actually cast it. Well, I mean, I've already taken my action as well, so I suppose the best I can do is just pick one up or and save it for next time, if I survive. Uh, yeah. Which uh, I think brings up Oscar. I will go into a rage and then try to cripple the Motherfucker. Oh, there are scrolls that are not spell scrolls. I see. Ah. I mean, I presume you can still read it, but that's just mean that you can't cast it unless you have ability to, or something like that. Uh, if it's not a spell scroll, then you can just attempt to use it. Oh, okay. So does the bugbear in front of me die? Uh, yes. You smash your flail down onto the back of his neck with a resounding crack and his body falls limp to the floor. I, I look uh, at uh, the blood swans grin and then just walk in and over here. I don't know why you want to step inside the room. They can get around us. If we're in the I hallway, know. they can't. If they attack you, I can get an extra attack. She's up one health. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have to actually hit, I hopefully. So, is that your turn, Oscar? Yeah. Step into the light. Uh, yeah. Would he... Yeah, I guess he would. He's a stupid bugbear. Uh, so how much damage does your thing do to him as he moves through it? Two D ten, and it is a con save. Yeah, he failed his save. Whoa. Fifteen. Nice. 
So yeah, as the bugbear goes charging like through the through the moonbeam, you see he like erupts into flames, uh, and the smell of you know burning hair continues to waft through the cave as he charges forward and attacks you with his morning star, Barrack. Mm-hmm. AC seven, I guess that's a miss. Yeah. Uh, this other blood sworn will have to save as well. Uh, is a I'm guessing an 18 is a save, but he still takes half. Yeah. He takes eight points of damage. Um, he will back out. Pulls out a crossbow. And he's going to shoot at one of you. 